Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. The National Weather Service just canceled the frost advisory for most of our viewing area, but it's still much colder this morning than it was yesterday. I'll show you what it will feel like as you head out the door. Plus, you'll soon see some changes on the Beltline near Western Boulevard. We'll tell you how the I-440 project expansion is coming along. And we are less than one hour away from a new look at how much we are paying at grocery stores and gas, too. Plus, how inflation has affected that. WREL is your place to analyze the consumer price index this morning. And a lot of people have noticed some things going back up, going to the grocery store. Eggs, oh, yeah. that's not been fun, especially yeah. when you're making pasta like I do on the weekends. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning here on WRL News. I'm Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Yeah, we just uh, heard Elizabeth talking about mm. how chilly it is out there. You definitely need the heavier jacket this morning. <laughs> She's in the WRL Live Center where the frost advisory, it's gone for our area. It has been canceled. However, it is still really chilly out there this morning. And we were close to freezing up near the Virginia line this morning. So if you're there, you may see a little patchy frost as you head out the door. This is a live look at Apex where it's gorgeous this morning. Lots of sunshine. It is 43 degrees and the wind has picked up just a little bit. It's out of the northeast now at 13 miles per hour. And it's that wind that really kept us from seeing a whole lot of frost this morning. The wind mixes up the layers of the atmosphere and just doesn't let us cool down quite as much. It's 36 in Roxborough, 38 in South Hill. So again, up there you might run into a little patchy frost, but almost everybody else is in the low to mid 40s now. 45 in Fayetteville, 42, Rocky Mountain, 43 degrees in Goldsboro. Hour by hour, it's going to be a cool afternoon, too. Even with the sunshine, our high just 59 degrees under partly cloudy skies. We're very close to having our next system that could be named Sarah here in the Caribbean. That storm is likely to hang out here for the next few days. But by next week, it could move on up into the Gulf of Mexico with some potential impact for Florida. And I'll show you the steering currents coming up, Ken. All right, let's spend the 8 o'clock hour all new into the WRO traffic center. Let's head up to Roseville and show you what we're looking at this morning. This is a serious crowds just reported in the southbound lane at Forestville Road near Lewisburg Road. You can see the congestion is causing uh, around that uh, uh, accident side. We'll keep an eye on that and let you know how much that's going to continue to affect your morning commute. Really and truly, Capitol Boulevard, which is an alternate route, is just as congested this morning. So uh, I would leave the house a little sooner than usual this morning. Elsewhere, Falls of News Road in the southbound lane near Spring Forest Road. Not seeing any delays in that area, but just watch for some police activity just to be on the safe side this morning. What isolate the Beltline for you this morning. I know many of you use that as a, a morning commute. The south side of the Beltline starting around Lake Wheeler Road. We're seeing a little bit of a slowdown. Not a little bit. The usual slowdown we see in this time of the morning. Also on the northern loop of the Beltline, we've seen that congestion coming off of 87 onto uh, the northern loop of the Beltline this morning. Here's a live look at I-440 and Capitol Boulevard. Even though you see the congestion building on the map, uh, traffic is moving along. Uh, even though it's a slow, steady clip, it's still moving. It really, that's good news right elsewhere let's head down east and show you what's going on with these 87 lanes a little while ago, you were looking at a 15-minute delay, but things are getting a little better, especially uh, up around Window Falls Parkway. So no need for that alternate route in terms of Nightdale Boulevard. Things are moving along nicely. If you're getting ready to head out, tune us in on the radio, 101.5 HD3. You can listen to us anywhere in the triangle. Thanks, Ken. This morning, the Red Cross is working to help people after a fire at a home on Cooper Road in Raleigh. The WRL breaking news tracker was there near the end of our 11 o'clock newscast last night. You can see a large firefighter response in this video. The Red Cross is helping because the home, the home has no power. Luckily, nobody was hurt. And we are also working to learn if any charges will be filed in a car crash that sent someone to the hospital. This happened in Raleigh near Capitol Boulevard and Buffalo Road around 8 o'clock last night. Police say the pedestrian who was hit was taken to the hospital and they do have serious injuries, but it is unclear what led up to the crash happening. However, WRL News is working to get that information and learn who is responsible for this. Today, we'll learn more about how inflation will affect what you pay for groceries and other needs. The Consumer Price Index report for October is due out at 830 this morning in about 25 minutes. WRL's Laura Levine joins us live from Raleigh. Laura, the experts say we're seeing prices starting to go back up now. 
We certainly are. Good morning, Michelle. And this report is coming out as we have seen back to back rate cuts. So with this report, many people looking, really taking a close look at the numbers to see if the prices that we're paying at places like the grocery store here will also take a cut or when we'll see things finally cool off. The Consumer Price Index measures price changes for goods and services. It's been considered an inflation tracker for quite some time. A Bank of America economist forecast the October CPI to show a firmer increase in core prices, with the median forecast pointing to a 0.3% rise month over month. Now, this would hold the 12-month core inflation rate at 3.3%. So remember, the target goal is to get back to 2%. Some experts are worried the Federal Reserve is underestimating the risk of the economy overheating. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell says he is hopeful about the economy. We continue to be confident that with an appropriate recalibration of our policy stance, strength in the economy and the labor market can be maintained, with inflation moving sustainably down to 2%. The CPI report will be released at 8.30 this morning. The feds will meet next month to determine whether or not they are uh, put, going to put a pause on those rate cuts or continue them. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Raleigh. There are some overnight closures in place on I-440 this week as new construction work is happening. Let's go ahead and bring in WRL's Kelsey Coffey. She joins us live in Raleigh. Kelsey, teams are working on the I-440 bridge that goes over Western Boulevard. <laughs> Yes, Chris, and there's some good news and some bad news for drivers this morning when it comes to this. So this 440 bridge project here is right on time. So that's the good news. But the bad news is the entire 440 widening project that's still running behind schedule. We'll give you a look now at a map so you can see the area that will be impacted by overnight closures this week. Crews will close the eastbound lanes of Western Boulevard first, then they'll close the westbound lanes. Here's what drivers can expect to see on the Beltline over the next few weeks. We're going to see quite a few closings over the next couple of weeks, and as they come out, they'll mainly be ramps. The bridge construction here is scheduled to be finished by Thanksgiving, but the entire 440 widening project, that's not expected to be done until next fall. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. And taking a live look at the White House this morning, President-elect Donald Trump and President Joe Biden are expected to meet in the Oval Office today at 11 a.m. Melania Trump was also invited, but sources say she is not expected to attend. It's tradition for the outgoing president to host the incoming president following the election. Trump did not host Biden in 2020 as he falsely maintained the election was stolen. We are learning more about who President-elect Trump is bringing aboard his administration for his White House return. Trump wants to put Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy in charge of a new Department of Government Efficiency. This essentially would fulfill a campaign promise to give Musk sweeping oversight of federal spending. Musk says he wants to cut $2 trillion from the federal budget. Ramaswamy has called for mass layoffs at federal agencies. Meanwhile, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is President-elect Trump's pick to lead the Department of Homeland Security. In a post to Truth Social, Trump says she is, quote, very strong on border security, and he also said she will guarantee that our American homeland is secure from our adversaries. He also announced on Truth Social that he plans to name Fox News personality Pete Hegseth as his Secretary of Defense. Hegseth is an Army National Guard veteran. Trump said that Hegseth is, quote, Quote, tough, smart, and a true believer in America first. We are learning more about the Southern Pines woman who died in a crash on a washed out portion of I-40 in Western North Carolina. She's been identified as 62-year-old Patricia Mahoney. Authorities say Mahoney was driving the wrong way on a closed section of the highway near the Tennessee border on Saturday night. Her car plunged 100 feet off a collapsed part of the interstate. It took crews from North Carolina and Tennessee about an hour to rappel into the gorge to pull her from the car. She was airlifted to a Tennessee hospital where she later died. Her family says a medical condition may have played a role in why she was going the wrong way on the closed interstate. We are waiting to learn if any charges will be filed after a wreck that led to a car crashing into a pole and done. First responders say the driver of this sedan here lost control crashed through a fence and then into this backyard pool. EMS found the car partially submerged with the driver still inside. That driver was taken to the hospital to be assessed there. Witnesses told rescue teams there was an initial crash at a nearby intersection that sent the driver into the fence and then the pool.
Some good tax planning could mean more money in your pocket. So get your questions ready and call in to Tax Pros on Call today. Five on Your Side is partnering with the North Carolina Society of Enrolled Agents to answer your tax planning questions all for free. Take down the number on your screen and have a brief summary of your tax questions or problems ready to go. Tax Pros on Call phone lines will be open from 4 until 7 p.m. Your time is 8.09. A new federal rule would make gas and oil companies pay if they release harmful gas into the air. Hear what experts believe President-elect Donald Trump will do with the new rule when he takes office. And we're learning more about the extent of the damage Helene caused in North Carolina. Meteorologist Chris Michaels tells us how it could affect wildfire season. And it's been a chilly start this morning. Some 30s up near the Virginia line where there could be some patchy frost, but a lot of us are in the 40s right now. Of course, that is colder than yesterday. I'll show you what a cold day we have in store tomorrow coming up. Welcome back on this chilly Wednesday morning as we take a live look over Raleigh. You're watching WRL News, available on Hulu and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. If you haven't stepped out the door yet, this is your warning. You need to wear a jacket today, not a light spring jacket. You need something a little heavier. It's chilly out there, Elizabeth. It is chilly. It's a lot colder than it was this time yesterday, even though it's gorgeous. Uh, we take a look at Fayetteville looking pretty here, as well as Apex, Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant. And of course, here in North Hills, a few high thin clouds, but uh, it's a really nice start out there. Tomorrow is going to be pretty much the polar opposite. It is going to be chilly, just like this morning, but we're going to see rain for most of the day. It's likely to be the coolest day tomorrow that we've seen in the last eight months. So all the way back to March since we've seen highs in the low 50s. Soaking rain during the day tomorrow, but it'll last all day, so it's not likely to be uh, a situation that's going to cause any flooding. Of course, right now we have wind coming out of the north, kind of setting the stage, continuing to push the cool air in. Temperatures right now range from the mid-30s in the north to low to mid-40s in the south. Speaking of south, we have a low that's pushing some moisture up the Mississippi Valley. This cold front will interact with that and help to push it eastward into our area, and that's what's going to bring us the steady rain tomorrow. If you're out early, say 6 or 7 a.m., you'll probably stay on the drier side, but by 9 or 10, we start to see the rain pushing in, and some of that rain will be steady, maybe even some pockets where it's heavy, but it's probably just going to feel steady all day long. This is 5 o'clock, so still during the evening commute, we're dealing with some rain. This is 11 o'clock, and then it starts to pull away, but as the low slides eastward, some moisture will wrap back around that low during the day on Friday, and that could still bring some showers in the morning, especially in our eastern counties. Other than that, will be partly cloudy during the afternoon. Looking at anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch of rain. Uh, we definitely need it. Uh, every little bit helps. It would be nice to see even more than that. But hey, we'll take an inch of rain. That will certainly be helpful. 100% chance for tomorrow. 40% chance on Friday as that rain starts to pull away from us. Tropical Outlook, 90% chance that we're going to see a system developing here. The next name on the list is Sarah. The storm is likely to wander around here in the Caribbean and then eventually next week move into the Gulf of Mexico with some potential impact of Florida. Here's a look at the steering currents for this. Right now we have high pressure sitting here. That's going to hold the storm down to the south for the next several days. But as the high moves out, it's going to start to get swept up behind the high, pulled to the north, and then a cold front will interact with and most likely kick it across Florida. The big question is, does the front arrive faster and keep it farther south or slower, which would allow it to head farther north? So We'll be watching that very carefully. Speaking of hurricanes, you know, we talked a lot about Helene's flooding, but there was also the high wind portion of that and the tree damage. Meteorologist Chris Michaels coming up to talk about how that could affect the mountains going forward over the next several months. Tomorrow, rainy 53 degrees, but if you don't like it, it does look much nicer for the weekend, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, what's happening now in the W traffic center? Let's uh, head up to Roseville and give you a look at this crash that we've been monitoring this morning. Uh, it's a serious crash on Forestville Road in the South on lanes near Lewisburg Road. You can see the congestion that's building there on Forestville Road. Uh, if that's part of your morning commute, give yourself a little extra time. Leave a little earlier than usual because that's still not cleared up and we've been watching it for the last half hour now. Uh, this crash on Falls of Noose Road in Southbound Lane near Spring Forest Road, not causing any problems for you this morning. Just thought you should know about it. Just look for the, some police activity in that area. Isolating the Beltline this morning, we're seeing a lot of a slow, a bit of a slowdown there in the Cary area uh, concerning that 
southern loop of the Beltline. This is where the trouble spot was yesterday, but this is just my congestion this morning that's really building there. You're looking at a 10 to 15 minute uh, delay in that area. Uh, Tryon Road might be your best bet if you're trying to get to carry this morning, so keep that in mind. Of course, the northern loop, uh, you're seeing the usual congestion this morning. Here's a live look at I-440 and Capitol Boulevard. Traffic is actually moving nicely in uh, both directions. Those westbound lanes moving away from us this morning. Uh, elsewhere, we're seeing the usual congestion building. Uh, those 885 lanes in and out of Durham this morning, you're looking at a 5 to 10 minute delay. Wherever you're headed this morning, tune us in on the radio, 101.5 HD3. You can listen to us anywhere in the Triangle. All right, thanks, Ken. We're waiting to learn if any charges will be filed after a wreck led to a car crashing into a pool in Dunn. First responders say the driver of this sedan lost control, crashed through a fence and into a backyard pool. EMS found the car partially submerged with the driver still inside. That driver was taken to the hospital to be checked out. Witnesses told rescue crews there was an initial crash at a nearby intersection that sent that driver into the fence and into that pool. We're learning more about the extent of the damage from Helene and what it could mean now that we're in wildfire season. Let's go ahead and bring in meteorologist Chris Michaels. He's joining us here. Chris, some of the damage is the worst our state has seen in decades. That's according to the North Carolina Forest Service. They said that 27% of the affected forest land had at least some damage, which would make it the most damage since Fran in 96 and Hugo in 1989. The state climate office said that Charlotte saw a 66 mile per hour wind gust, the worst that the Queen City had seen since uh, 2019. But the thing that's cool about our climate office is that they have these different weather stations that help to bring more representation to areas that we really haven't surveyed before. Frying Pan Mountain, 87 mile an hour gust. Mount Mitchell, 106 mile per hour gust at the height of Helene. In Ash County, we saw those tropical storm force wind gusts as well. So that created a lot of that damage, and it's also been extremely dry ever since. So the National Interagency Fire Center put out this wildfire outlook, and it shows parts of North Carolina uh, dealing with a higher than usual wildfire potential. Trees that fell may not be conducive for burning until even next year. Back to the climate office, they say that there is a higher than usual fire outlook for today. So thankfully, we're getting some rain tomorrow. We have the hour by hour outlook for that on W. URAL.com. All right, thanks, Chris. Ceilings caved in, floors torn apart from extensive water damage. Homeowners in one neighborhood in Holly Springs say they are experiencing all of these problems because of broken pipes. They all use Aqua NC as their water provider. Aqua NC confirmed with WREL that its crews flushed the pipes in the McKenzie neighborhood last week. Complaints quickly started coming in about burst pipes, damaged walls, even discolored water. I'm looking for reimbursement, I'm looking for safety, for quality water, an emergency protocol, um, and just to make sure that we're like getting the services that we're paying for. In a statement to WREL, Aqua NC said, our customers are also our neighbors and we never want to see them in distress. Since learning about the issues, we have been in contact with customers who have been connected with our claims department to further investigate. Our operations team is also investigating the issue. President-elect Donald Trump says he has chosen John Ratcliffe to serve as CIA director. He was director of national intelligence from 2020 to 2021. Ratcliffe stayed in that role through the transition to the Biden administration. And during that time, he told Trump there was no evidence of foreign interference or widespread fraud in the 2020 election. The Biden administration's Environmental Protection Agency wants oil and gas companies to pay up. A new policy would charge fossil fuel companies fees if they emit dangerous levels of methane gas. But as Sean Langeal reports, President-elect Donald Trump will likely reverse this. It's a first. The Environmental Protection Agency announcing new regulations Tuesday, citing how oil and natural gas companies will have to pay a federal fee if they release harmful amounts of methane. We need rapid change on a scale that we've never seen before. Methane is a greenhouse gas more potent than carbon dioxide. It traps heat in the atmosphere, causing temperatures to creep up. While methane naturally exists, scientists say the gas generated by global fossil fuel use and production is amplifying the issue. About half of the emissions we've detected in the last year, so about 47% to be more precise, are from the oil and gas industry. While waste management emissions comprise about a third, 
33 percent. According to the EPA policy, companies emitting excess methane in 2024 could be charged $900 per ton. Fees could rise to $1,500 per ton by 2026. All fossil fuels actually increased in 2024, gas and oil. So oil had a massive drop during COVID because of the lack of travel. And that's been steadily increasing and now it's back to its pre-pandemic levels. The rule, however, will not become final until early next year and its survival is uncertain. President-elect Donald Trump tapped former New York Congressman Lee Zeldin to lead the EPA in its upcoming term. Analysts expect climate regulations signed by President Joe Biden will be reversed under Trump to increase U.S. oil and gas production. In the past year, we've detected more emissions than ever before, despite global pledges and plans to reduce those emissions made at COP28. This comes as the United Nations Climate Summit presses on overseas, with officials debating how to finance clean energy solutions. That was Sean Langeal with that story. What you pay for gas and groceries could be going up again. This morning, hear what economists are saying about today's new economic report coming out in the next seven minutes. And President-elect Trump returning to the White House today, his meeting with Biden marking the start of the transition of power. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. It is a chilly start to our Wednesday, but it's beautiful out there. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner has a live look over North Hills. It is crisp and cool out here at North Hills this morning, and that's true all across the viewing area. We've mostly been in the 40s from the Triangle area southward. We did have some cooler temperatures up near the Virginia line, but even South Hill now is at 40 degrees since the sun's been up for a little while. 41 Lewisburg, 45 in Fayetteville, Irwin, and Goldsboro. That's still significantly cooler than it was yesterday, and it stays cool this afternoon. Uh, looking at when the kids come home from school, temperatures will only be in the upper 50s, but it will stay sunny, Kent. All right, well, it's been happening down at the WR Traffic Center. We're seeing the usual congestion on the northern and southern loop of the Beltline, as well as heading in and out of Durham this morning. In terms of delays, let's take a look at what we're talking about here. If you're getting ready to head out, the real troubled spot is US-1 coming in from Wake Forest. You're looking at a 10-minute delay. And that uh, 40 eastbound, there was a crash there earlier that's still lingering. Uh, you're looking at an 8-minute delay. As far as going into the Bull City this morning, you're looking at a 15-minute delay on I-885. So give yourself some extra time this morning. I'll have another update at the bottom of the hour over on Fox 50. Thanks, Ken. We're working to learn if any charges will be filed after a person was hit by a car on Capitol Boulevard in Raleigh. This happened around 8 o'clock last night near the Capitol Boulevard and Buffalo Road intersection. Police say the pedestrian was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. And there will be new overnight closures near a few I-440 ramps this week. Crews will close the eastbound lanes of Western Boulevard first, then they'll close the westbound lanes. The bridge construction is scheduled to be finished by Thanksgiving. The entire 440 project is set to be complete by next fall. Next on Fox 50, we'll get a look at how inflation is impacting the price you pay at the grocery store. The CPI report will be released in just a few minutes. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Lots of sunshine, but a chilly morning tomorrow. We'll have some rain that rolls in and it stays awfully cold. I'll show you what to expect as we get into a different weather pattern. Plus, a fire in Raleigh led to a large firefighter presence. This morning, WRL is getting you a look at the response as we look into how this fire started. And concerns this morning surrounding the prices that we pay at the grocery store, the gas station, and more. What an important economic report due out any moment now will reveal about the economy. We'll have analysis in the WRL Live Center as soon as that report is released. It's due to come out at 8.30, so right now, as soon as that comes out, we will get over uh, to Jeff Hogan in the WRL Live Center. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. I'm Chris Levin. Good. 8.30 on the dot. We'll I'm get down. to that in just a bit here. <laughs> we do got to get to meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner because things are starting off a little chilly. We've got that frost advisory, but that's only going to be in effect for so long. That's right. Um, while you ran out... <laughs> <laughs> the weather service did cancel it. We just really didn't get that cold overnight last night because of the wind that developed. It kept the atmosphere mixed up and we ended up with some mid 30s near the Virginia line, but everybody else in the 40s this morning. Taking a look at our RDU, it looks beautiful out here. Lots of sunshine to some high thin clouds, 43 degrees, and the wind has started to pick up a little bit. We're out of the northeast at 13 miles per hour right now. We'll have some gusts up to 15 or 20 this afternoon. 37 Roxborough, but 42 in Rocky Mount, 42 Southern Pines, 45 in Fayetteville. So starting to see those temperatures 
temperatures creep up just a little bit. It is going to be a cool afternoon. Only 59 degrees for us today under mostly sunny skies. Checking the tropics any minute now. We'll likely see the system develop. The next uh, name on the list is Sarah. 90% chance that it develops in the next 48 hours. When it does, it's likely to wander around here in the Caribbean and then next week move northward with some possible impacts for Florida. We'll talk about where it could be headed. Coming up, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, happening now in the W.O. Traffic Center uh, in the 8.30 half hour. You see the congestion building in the usual spots, 8.85 going in and out of Durham this morning, as well as uh, I-40 east and westbound, but nothing really that's going to make you late. Uh, this crash we've been following right now, it's probably in the clearing phase right around Forestville Road in the southbound lane near Lewisburg Road. There was a lot of congestion on Forestville Road, but that's beginning to clear up nicely. Isolating the Beltline this morning, many of you used the Beltline, uh, the southern loop of the Beltline, Line. Things are beginning to um, get congested there as well as the northern loop of the Beltline. So let's show you exactly what we're talking about in terms of that southern loop. This is I-40 and Lake Wheeler Road. Those westbound lanes are moving away from us and uh, things have definitely slowed down in that southern loop of the Beltline. So you might want to leave the house a little sooner than usual because it'll probably take another half hour before that clears up. If you're heading out this morning, listen to us on the radio anywhere at 101.5 HD3 or 99.3 FM in Raleigh or 96.5 FM in Durham. Good. Take you with us on the go. Thanks, Ken. This morning, the Red Cross is assisting people affected by a fire at a home on Cooper Road in Raleigh. The WRL breaking news tracker was there near the end of our 11 o'clock newscast last night. You can see this large firefighter response in this video. The Red Cross is helping out these people because, well, the home has no power. It's unclear how this fire was started, but WRL News is working to get that information. At last check, no injuries were reported. We are working to learn if any charges will be filed after a person was hit by a car on Capitol Boulevard in Raleigh. This happened around 8 o'clock last night near the intersection of Capitol Boulevard and Buffalo Road. Police say the pedestrian was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Drivers were detoured off Capitol Boulevard as officers investigated. Just a heads up for drivers in Raleigh about new oversight, or rather new overnight closures near a few I-440 ramps this week. WRL's Kelsey Coffee explains teams are working on the I-440 bridge that goes over Western Boulevard. There's some good news and some bad news for drivers today. The good news is that this 440 bridge project here is happening right on schedule. The bad news is the entire 440 widening project that's still running behind. Let's take you to a map here so you can see the area that will be impacted by overnight closures this week. Crews will close the eastbound lanes of Western Boulevard first, then they'll close the westbound lanes. Drivers can expect to see more ramp closures on the Beltline over the next few weeks. With these changes, people need to pay even more attention than they have been. Read the signs, make sure you know where you're going because we want our construction workers to go home to their families just like we want you to make it home to your family. This bridge construction is set to be complete just before Thanksgiving, but the entire 440 winding project, that's not set to be done until next fall. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. Covering Wake County, more than 200 parents have signed a petition against a plan to send thousands of students to different schools next year. Many of those parents attended the Wake County School Board meeting last night to share their thoughts. The reassignment was proposed because of three new elementary schools and a new high school opening in the southern part of the county next year. Concerned parents say that moving kids to different schools, that's damaging to students. Frequent reassignments like this cause significant disruption in the lives of our children, preventing them from building lasting relationships, forming bonds with their teachers, and feeling a sense of belonging with their school community. Wake County Public Schools held 10 information sessions about the plan in the months before last night's public hearing. The board is expected to vote on the plan November 26th. The vice chair of the Wake County School Board will resign at the end of December. Monica Johnson Hostler's last day on the board will be December 30th. She was just elected to North Carolina's House of Representatives. The school board will open applications for her replacement soon. They'll serve through 2026. Johnson Hostler was served on the, has served on the school board since 2014 and represents much of southern Wake County, including Fuquay, Verena and Garner. President-elect Donald Trump and President Biden are expected to meet in the Oval Office at the White House this morning. That's where you're looking live. And that meeting is happening in the next three hours, 11 a.m. Melania Trump was also invited, but sources say she is not expected to attend. It is tradition for the outgoing president to host the incoming president after the election. Trump did not host Biden in 2020 as he falsely maintained the election was stolen.
We will have full coverage of the meeting between Trump and Biden later today. We'll have reports during our newscast from 4 to 7 this evening on WRL News. Today, Durham Mayor Leo Williams is planning to hold a joint news conference with the school board chair and the county commissioner chair. Mayor Williams says he wants to share his response to a WRL story that highlights an increase in crimes committed by Durham residents in Wake County. He says the story was disappointing and unfair. Arrest data from several agencies shows a 35 percent increase in charges against people from Durham in Wake, Western Wake County since 2019. But Williams says where they are from doesn't matter. We can't control if an individual who live in Durham or Raleigh or wherever else um, decides to go and commit a crime. But crime happens, and I'm not going to pretend that that's not a reality anywhere in this country, not just Durham, but anywhere. At today's news conference, Mayor Williams says they plan to discuss a number of issues of uh, dividing Durham lately. And Jeff Hogan of the WRL Live Center with those highly anticipated numbers. The Consumer Price Index report was just released from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. And these are the numbers that hone in on the things that we need to buy every day. Groceries and gas, things like that. Well, it ticked up slightly. 0.2%, okay, that is the 2.6 that you're seeing right there is for the year in total. So 2.4% is where it was as far as inflation. It's going to be a, a tough slog to get it down to where the Fed wants it at that 2.0 mark. That's what this proves in one way. Uh, also reporting that it hit a bump in October. It had been slowing for months. So that 0.2%, let's see what it means as far as the markets are concerned right now, uh, it's making things a little bit sketchy, it's sliding just a bit. Uh, everything's showing up uh, that it's going to drop in the Dow futures down 85 right now. Start of the market uh, less than an hour away right now. But this is where we stand, a 0.2 percent tick up in that consumer price index. We'll be monitoring the opening bell to see how investors are reacting. Thank you, Jeff. This morning, a live look at the U.S. Capitol, where FEMA Administrator Dan Criswell will be next week. She will appear before a subcommittee next Tuesday. That's on the agency's response to Hurricanes Helene and Milton. Lawmakers will ask questions about relief for victims. This includes addressing claims of FEMA officials not prioritizing helping people who displayed Trump campaign signs at their homes. Criswell will also be testifying in front of the House Oversight Committee later that same day. All flights from the U.S. to Haiti are suspended for at least 30 days. The announcement from the FAA comes as planes from Spirit and JetBlue were hit by bullets while flying over Port-au-Prince. Haitian authorities have already suspended flights in and out of Port-au-Prince for a week. And covering Edgecombe County, Amazon has purchased land in Tarboro. That's according to documents obtained by WREL from the County Register of Deeds. The land is located at the Tarboro Commerce Center. It's situated just off Highway 64 and McNair Road. And it's not clear whether Amazon plans to build a warehouse, a fulfillment center, or sorting center on that land. One person was taken to the hospital after a fire in Cary. Video from the WRL breaking news tracker shows the scene yesterday on Gregory Drive. Investigators believe a candle might have been the cause of this fire. One person had minor injuries and they had smoke inhalation as well. Sixth ranked Duke faced a tough challenge last night playing 19th ranked Kentucky in the State Farm Champions Classic in Atlanta. Just after 1130 last night, the game came down to the closing seconds. Duke trailed by two as star freshman Cooper Flagg brought the ball down the court, but he lost control of the ball and stepped out of bounds. Kentucky ends up getting that win 77 to 72. I saw his ankle go out mm. there. So if you or a loved one use Medicare, this is something you have to hear. Premiums and deductibles will be more expensive in the new year. We'll tell you how much more it's going to cost. And downtown Fuquay Verena is getting an upgrade. The plans for a major development that will bring hundreds of apartments and shopping to that area. Let's get you a live look this morning at Pinehurst. It's cool out there, but that's not stopping people from hitting the links. We've got much needed rain on the way. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will give us the hour by hour timing and a new look at how much rain we can expect.
It's 844 and we take a live look at downtown Raleigh, looking down Fayetteville Street from the Jimmy V camera. You'll probably notice the flags here kind of moving along. We did end up with a fairly breezy night last night and that kept our temperatures from being able to drop quite as far as it looked like they might have otherwise. If we'd had a quiet night with no wind, our temperatures would have fallen into the 30s. It was likely widespread, but we're mostly 40s last night. 43 is our current temperature. Our dew point's 29. That just means that it's very dry out there. Uh, but with the breeze and the temperatures in the low to mid 40s, a jacket definitely feels good out there. It's a lot colder this morning than it was this time yesterday. It's still 39 in Roxborough right now, but again, elsewhere looking at low to mid 40s. Temperatures are 10 to 15 degrees colder than they were this time yesterday. So that's a pretty big change. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit too. It's out of the northeast at about uh, 5 to 10, 13 miles per hour there in Durham and Raleigh. We're seeing a gust up to 16 there in Goldsboro. Around town this afternoon, it stays chilly. 59 in Raleigh, 58 in Durham, and 62 degrees in Fayetteville. We do have sunshine in the forecast for the rest of the day today, but everything changes for tomorrow. Look at how pretty our weather watcher photo is for today, though. Bobby Brown said assist from Enfield. Almost looks like a watercolor painting, doesn't it? That gorgeous sky reflected in the pond here. Thanks for sending us that, and we'd love to see your photos, too. Go to WRL.com and search weather watchers. Our normal low is 41, so what we saw this morning was right at normal, and we'll be close to that all the way through Sunday, and then slightly warmer on Monday, but we're not likely to have frost in our forecast, even though our afternoon highs will be the coldest that we've seen since late March. Upper 50s today, lower 50s for tomorrow. As a matter of fact, a lot of the day tomorrow is going to feel like 40s. Our normal high is 64, but that 53 tomorrow, we're going to see a northeast wind. It's going to rain pretty much all day. The temperatures will be about what we see at the end of December. And you know, it's not unusual for us to see, you know, a good bit of rain on and off at the end of December. So feeling like Christmas, but um, maybe kind of the Grinch's Christmas. I mean, it's going to be chilly. It's going to be wet. We're going to see the moisture coming up out of the Gulf of Mexico. We're already starting to see that. This cold front will interact with that and push it eastward into our area. So we take a look at Futurecast. It's likely to begin to rain around the middle of the morning, and that rain will be with us on and off for the rest of the day. Just a steady rain. We're not likely to see any flooding with this, but it just keeps on coming as we get through the afternoon and evening on Thursday. And again, don't forget how chilly it's going to be along with that. If uh, that sounds miserable, well, hold on. The weekend looks nicer with 60s and sunshine. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. This morning, investigators are working to learn what caused an explosion at a Louisville, Kentucky manufacturing plant. This hurt 12 people and two of those people died in the hospital. The blast happened yesterday afternoon at a food dye manufacturing facility. Some of the injured employees were trapped inside after part of the building collapsed. That blast also blew out windows of some nearby buildings. People who live within two blocks of the plant were evacuated from their homes because of this. They're since been allowed to return to their home. Today marks two years since the murders of four University of Idaho students. On November 13th, 2022, the four students were found dead in an off-campus house in Moscow, Idaho. A week later, Brian Koberger was arrested and charged with their murders. Koberger is currently being held in Boise, Idaho, awaiting his trial, which is set to begin in June. On Thursday, Koberger's lawyers asked a judge to take the death penalty off the table. The judge has not been made a decision on that request. Koberger has pleaded not guilty. The school is holding a vigil tonight on the campus for the students killed. A new proposal to make Raleigh's Village District a social district is drumming up concern among the people who live nearby. So this map behind me, this shows the boundaries of where people would be allowed to drink alcohol outdoors. The proposal would allow people to drink beer, wine, or cocktails from specially marked cups. And to be clear, this would only be allowed during specific times and areas of the Village District. It would kind of be like the sip and stroll program already in place downtown. Neighbors who spoke with WREL say they are worried that a social district could create a spillover effect of bad behavior. I love going over to the wine bar. I love getting a beer. But um, can we leave it inside the establishment? Do we really need to go so far as to get one to go? The village district made its initial proposal to city council last month, but it likely won't be considered again until at least January. InfoWars, started by conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, is being auctioned off today as part of a court-mandated sale. Jones has been ordered to pay more than $1 billion to the families of Sandy Hook Elementary School victims. His InfoWars program was found to have made false claims about the school massacre that left 26 people dead. It's not clear if the winning bidder or bidders will be announced today. 
seniors will have to pay more for Medicare Part B next year. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services says monthly premiums and deductibles are going up. So doctor's visits, outpatient care, and medical equipment will rise by about 6%. The monthly premium will be $185. Higher income seniors will pay a max of $628 a month, but that number could be lower, depending. The agency says the premium increase is because of estimated price changes and expected use of this plan. And breaking news in the WRO Live Center, the FBI has arrested and charged a man for allegedly leaking highly classified U.S. documents. I want to tell you a little bit about what these documents contained because uh, they were about Israel's plans for retaliation against Iran. They've been looking into this for a while now, and according to the court documents, Asif Rahman was indicted for willfully retaining and transmitting national defense information. He was arrested in Cambodia. He will first appear in court in Guam, but the State Department here has asked a federal judge to move him to the United States for trial. All right, thank you, Jeff. Covering Way County, a major development could be coming to downtown Fuquay Verena. Town officials are working on a deal to sell two and a half acres next to Town Hall to a development group that would build ground level shops topped with hundreds of apartments. Officials are weighing a proposal to give the developer millions in economic incentives for the proposed project at East Academy and North Main Streets. The apartment developer and a town spokeswoman declined to comment on the project near Town Hall. Officials scheduled a meeting for next week to discuss the sale and incentives. For more on the project, you can go to WREL.com. This week's Teacher of the Week always knew she wanted to work with young people. WREL's Ken Smith introduces us to an educator who found her calling in the classroom five years ago. Ms. Jones. Hi. You are WREL's Teacher of <laughs> the Week. Congratulations, no yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. No. You oh my are. God. When we dropped by to surprise Tanika Jones, it was Halloween. But this was no trick. It was all a treat, just like she is to her students at Cary High School. I love working with the youth. I really do. Just making a difference. It's a passion of mine. Jones leads the occupational course of study at Cary High School. All right, guys, so we just started our unit for DNA, right? This is a program for students needing a little extra help in getting prepared for life after high school. You work with occupational course of study. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to know you're helping these students? Because basically, you're providing a safety net. Yes, I have a... Um, Rita Pearson says a quote where every kid, every student deserves a champion, someone who will never give up on them, and that's me. <laughs> Each and every day. Each and every day, I give it my all. And giving it her all is what she does best when it comes to the success of her students. Ken Smith, WRL News. And just a reminder, if you would like to nominate a teacher, you can go to WRL.com and enter Teacher of the Week in the search box. A therapy dog is helping first responders in California keep their cool during tough situations. Hudson, gold, a golden doodle, works with the Ventura County Fire Dispatch Center. When the mountain fire broke out last week, the communication center took seven times more calls than usual. One of the dispatchers even took a call from her neighbors who were trapped in their homes. Hudson has been there to help her and other dispatchers. I feel him. I, I love on him a little bit. I'm like, wow. I needed that. <laughs> I had no idea I did, but I did. We need dogs. They're amazing. Hudson is one of three dogs on the force. It took him three years of training to become a therapy dog. All right. Hot goss this morning. John Krasinski is people's sexiest man alive. The magazine shared the cover of its upcoming addition to social media just before midnight. In an interview shared by the magazine, Krasinski says he thinks his wife, actress Emily Blunt, will make him do more household chores <laughs> after the announcement. I think this is like the only occasion I could ever start a story with hot goss alert. Just oh, saying. my gosh. You just heard him mouth <laughs> what is happening. He said he was so shocked. He was like, me? Yes, John, he, you are. He did the Jim Halpert stare into the camera. It was just like, <laughs> what? So good. Hey, before we go to break, we do have your winning lottery numbers. And, of course, we'll get you another check on weather and traffic in just a bit.